and welcome to the Bridge Children's Midweek Service. My name is Auntie Ife and I am so excited to be here with you. Oh my goodness, did you have fun on Sunday? Wow, Sunday was a lot of fun. We watched a movie, we listened to music, we we just played and had fun we had popcorn we had um, the noodles the very yummy 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 spicy noodles mm, fantastic i cannot forget that taste in a hurry we had a lot of fun on sunday and um i hope that uh, you will not forget it in a hurry as well <laughs> all right now we're going to be doing this every wednesday this is our own midweek service we're going to be having it every wednesday so Myself and some other teachers will be coming to teach you different topics on the Word of God every Wednesday. So as our parents and adults are having their midweek service, we're going to be having ours as well. So you're not left out, okay? Yes, I'm excited too and I really, really hope that you are. You're going to have a fantastic time. Trust me. All right. So um, this evening, this evening we're going to be talking about prayer and our topic is jesus hears our prayers do you believe that jesus hears your prayers do you i do i believe that jesus hears your prayers jeremiah 29 verse 12 says then you will call on me and come and pray to me and i will listen to you that is god talking then you will call on me and come to me and pray to me and i will listen to you hold on to that jeremiah 29 verse 12 please hold on to that and every time you feel like you know something is bothering you remember this remember the last line especially where it says i will listen to you so you should always have it at the back of your mind that jesus christ hears you and he will listen to anything you tell him in the place of prayer okay now what is prayer Prayer is communication with God. Prayer is the process of talking to God. And yes, you can talk to God. I talk to God. The way I pray, I talk to God as if God is right in front of me and, you know, he's sitting in front of me and we're having a conversation like you're just with your siblings or your, your friends. That is how I like to talk to God because it makes, me, makes him more real to me than the conventional way of praying that a lot of us are used to. So I just sit down and I, you know, God, and I say, God, this and this happened today. I'm not happy about it. What do you think I should do? Do you think I should handle it this way? Do you think I should have responded this way? What should I have said? You know, so I try to have a conversation with God and I try as much as possible to put myself in a place where I can hear God respond to me back. You know, so that is what prayer is, the process of talking to God. And you can talk to God about anything. What are the things you can talk to God about? You can talk, talk to God about things bothering you. You know, there are some things that you, you really can't share with other people, well, apart from your parents, because I, I want to um, encourage you to share things with your parents. Whatever it is you're going through, always make sure you inform your parents, because after God, they're the only ones who can help you, who love you so much, and who you can trust okay so there are some things that you cannot share with some people and then the first person you go to is god and you tell god oh god there's this person bullying me in school somebody said this thing to me in school and i don't like it somebody called me fat somebody said i have crooked teeth somebody said i have big lips somebody said my eyes are too large somebody said i don't know anything you know a lot of things that other children say to you you take it to god and you let god know how you feel so you're not only going to report the person to God, you're going to tell God how you feel. You want to express your feelings to God because you can't express those feelings to anyone else. So you can talk to God about things that you can't talk to anybody about. You can talk to God about things that hurt you, people that have hurt you. So if somebody hurts you and you don't know how to handle it, you know, when somebody hurts you, the next thing to do is not to hurt the person back. No, that is not what God wants. That is what Satan wants. Satan wants us to hate people. Satan wants us to, to avenge, you know, when somebody does something for you, do your own back. No, 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 no. That is what Satan wants. But what God wants is if somebody does something bad to you, yes, you can talk to the person about it and say, you did something to me and I don't like it. But God will not expect you to, re to retire. Um, 
what's that word we got to not expect you to to retaliate yes got to not expect you to retaliate because love god wants you to love everybody you know he doesn't want us giving an eye for an eye or he doesn't want us doing our own back if you keep doing your own back everybody's going to be hurt you know and we're going to have a lot of damaged people walking around so you show love by praying for people who have hurt you so you pray for people who have hurt you you pray for your parents very important in fact this should be top of the list you pray for your parents because your parents are the ones that God has placed your life I mean they placed your life into their hands and they have they have placed them above you to take care of you so if you don't pray for them they will make mistakes sometimes they will do things that will hurt you sometimes and you even wonder are these people really my parents you know I've been there I've been there I know I know these things I know how you feel sometimes when your mom spanks you or when your dad scolds you and you just feel why would you talk to me in that manner you know you say it in your heart you can't say it to them but you say it in your heart and you're wondering why would daddy talk to me in that manner did I do anything that bad for daddy to have you know spoken to me in that manner or why would mommy spank me so hard so sometimes our parents need us to pray for them so you pray to them and the interesting thing is God listens to your prayers even faster than your parents or any other adults yes God loves children that much and he listens to the prayers of children so when you pray for your parents you know you have, you have you're you're helping them to parent you to love you better for instance you need something as a family okay let's assume probably on Sunday on your way back from church after having such a good time in church and then the air conditioning system of the car just suddenly stops and everybody's grumpy you know it's really hot everybody's grumpy everybody just wants to go and take a shower and get off of all the sweat and everything do you know that what you can do as a lovely godly child is to go to your room get on your knees and tell god to please provide money for your parents to repair that air conditioning system or provide another car for your parents these are the kind of things you can do to help your parents you pray for them you pray to god to protect your parents as well because your parents go to work every day to make money so that they can have a lot of resources to take good care of you to take you on those holiday trips to take you to those fancy places to take you to the zoo the museum to buy fancy things for you to buy clothes for you and um a lot of children lose their parents every day you know so you pray to god to keep protecting your parents guiding them they're going out and they're coming in god should continue to protect them so you pray for that you also of course like i said you pray for provision god should provide for them so that they'll be able to take good care of you and give you a fantastic life right you pray for your friends very important you pray for your friends um Pray for people who have hurt you. you no, know, I've mentioned that earlier. Pray for people who hurt you. Pray for your friends. Your friends will love you, will show you love, who are there for you. Your friends that you go to school together. You pray for them. Your classmates, they may not be so close to you as your friends, but as long as you're in the same school, in the same environment, you pray for them. You pray that God should help them, protect them, guide them, you know, keep them so that nobody dies or nobody has an accident and all of that. You pray for your friends as well. You pray for your teachers. Your teachers are very important in your life. You're, they are very, very important because they help you to learn. They teach you the things that will help your future, help you in future. So you pray for your teachers as well. Your teachers in school, your assistant, teacher, teachers, assistants, the head of your school. If you know the owner of your school, you can pray for them. You pray for your teachers in church as well. You pray for me, you pray for Miss Fumi, you pray for Miss Esther. Pray for Uncle Bosola and pray for um, Mommy Titi Adebwe. You pray for Pastor Vicky Adebwe because that's the pastor of your church. You pray for your church. You pray for you pray for everything and everybody because that is what God wants us to do. Okay. Now, how do you pray? Very very simple. The first thing you do when you are about to pray is you start with thanksgiving. So you thank God for the things that He has done in the past. Today is Wednesday, so you're going to thank God for um, you're going to thank God for Tuesday. You thank God for Monday. You thank God for Sunday. You thank God for all the things that He has done 
previously Alrighty. in the past for waking you up go. for providing for you for taking you to school safely for bringing maybe your grandma visited for bringing your grandma safely to visit you anything at all that comes to your mind your father got you a gift you pray for your dad you pray for the gift you thank god that oh thank you jesus you say you know you say prayers like thank you jesus for this beautiful gift that daddy has given to me thank you for everything that you have done for me so you thank god for the things that god has done in the past because when you thank god for the things he has done before it will be moved to do new things for you right so thank god for the things that he has done in the past so that you'll be able to do new things for you secondly so number one uh, again is to start with thanksgiving number two you ask God for forgiveness of sins. Now, if there's any way that you have, you, I mean, you throughout the week, you might have done some things to, that, that God may not be having proud of. Throughout the week, you might have done some things that God may not have been proud of. Um, probably you abused somebody in school, you, you, you hide somebody, you took something that doesn't belong to you, you told a lie, you know, those things that we think are little but are not so little. Yes, so you ask God to forgive you for doing those things. Because, you know, sometimes we get carried away. Um, you, you know, something is, uh, you're trying to cover up something that somebody has done or something that you have done and you keep telling a lie to cover your lie and another lie to cover the lie and all of that. So you ask God to forgive you for all those things. Thirdly, you forgive anyone who has offended you. You cannot go into the presence of God with a grudge in your heart it is not possible that god will answer you no so what you do is you start with thanksgiving you ask for forgiveness of sin then you forgive anyone who has offended you so while you're praying oh thank you jesus for today it's such a beautiful day thank you for all the things that you have done for me and my family please forgive me of all my sins and all the bad things that i have done that may not like upset me in school today and I want to forgive her. I forgive her for upsetting me today in school and I release her from my mind. That clears it all. So you start with Thanksgiving. I'm repeating it again so you can remember. You start with Thanksgiving. You um, ask for forgiveness of your sins. Then you forgive others for the things that they've done for you. Then number four, you make your request known to God. So you tell God the things that you want him to do, the reason why you're praying, you tender all of that before God. Number five, you thank God for forgiving you of your sins. Mm. Number five, you thank God for answering your prayers. So one, start with thanksgiving. Two, ask for forgiveness. Three, forgive others. Four, make your request. Five, thank God for answering the prayers that you have asked. You know, you thank God for this number four. And then number six, which is the final way to pray, is to pray in the name of Jesus. And you may be wondering, why are we praying in the name of Jesus? Oh, very simple. So Jesus is our intermediary. That means is the one who's in between us and God. Is the one who takes our messages, our prayers, our requests, our, our groanings. Is the one who takes our pain, everything to God. God fixes it, brings the answer to Jesus. Jesus deploys it to our angels, and then voila, our, our requests have been um, fulfilled. So you pray in the name of Jesus, Father. I want this, this, and this in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I ask for this. Because the name of Jesus is a very is a name that, that is so big, it's bigger than any other name in the world. That is the only name that God answers to. So you make your request in the name of Jesus. And um, one final thing I'd like to say, I know I said number six was the final one, but one final thing I'd like to say is you wait. Very important, you wait. So after going through one to five, you wait. Number seven is to wait. You wait for God to answer those prayers. Okay? So you start with thanksgiving. Thank God for all that he has done for you. Forgive, ask for forgiveness. Forgive others. Make your request known. Say thank you for your request. Pray in the name of Jesus. 
and wait for God to answer your prayers. And trust me, he's going to answer all your requests as long as your requests are according to his will and his purpose. That is also important. So you cannot right now be asking God for a car. God is not going to give you a car. He might give your parents a car, but he won't give you a car because you are too young to drive. You don't need a car right now. You cannot, you don't have a job to maintain a car. So why should he answer that prayer? But if you're asking God to provide a car for your parents, he's going to answer that. So you know, you need to be able to find a balance for the kind of prayer request that you're asking from God. If somebody has upset you, you can't ask God to take the person away. It's not possible. You can only ask God to forgive the person and teach you to love that person. All right. So yes, so that is the end of our Bible study for today i'll just leave you with two bible passages that i want you to go back home to read first john chapter 5 verse 14 first john chapter 5 verse 14 it says this is the confidence we have in approaching god that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us i'll take it again this is the confidence we have in approaching god that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us you see Jesus hears you. God hears you. So when you ask anything according to his will, according to the things that make God happy, God hears you. All right. Um, the second one is Mark 11 verse 24. Mark 11 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. <gasps> Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. In fact, I want you to write this down. Mark 11, 24. Write it down. Put it maybe under your pillow. You can put it on top of your bed. You can put it anywhere that you know that you're going to see it. So anytime you're feeling any kind of way, you you need to pray about something, but you feel like well, maybe God is not hearing you or you are not sure that God can hear you because you can't see God. I know children ask that question a lot and we're going to treat that very soon. But, you know, if you're feeling any kind of way at any time, just hold on to this Mark 11, 24, that whatever you ask for in prayer, believe it. The key word is believe. You believe it in your heart that God is going to do it and you will, you will do it. It is yours. So Mark 11, 24 again says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be all yours. Okay? So the exercise you're going to do for me this week, that is between today and next Wednesday, is you're going to take note of one person around you. Right? Probably in school, your neighbors, your household, anywhere. Take note of one person around you. The person might be sick, the person might be in need. You just want to praise God for that person. You just want to thank God for the person. You want to say a prayer about something personal you know about the person. Take note of that one person and pray for that person for the rest of this week. Yes, and also pray for yourself. But the reason why I'm asking you to pray for other people is so that you develop the habit of praying for other people and not just yourself alone, you know, because that's one of the things that Jesus wants us to do. What's important is that you develop the habit of praying for people, okay? All right, so this is the end of today's Bible study, and um, I'll see you next week by God's grace, and i see you in church on Sunday as well. Thank you so much, and have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful and blessed week ahead. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We worship you. You're a great God, an amazing God. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for a new week. We thank you, Lord, for the middle of the week that we've gotten to today, Wednesday. We thank you for all the children at the bridge. We thank you for the bridge church. We thank you for our families. We thank you for your protection and love. We accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for today's service we ask that you speak to us speak through us in the name of jesus open our hearts to receive your word in jesus mighty name amen god bless you bye, -bye.